the fourth most heavily armed military in the world against homeless families on the streets of Han Yunus. What is this? What is the win? What is the win? He was in a bombed out building and it was a very hectic situation. Drones were going, tanks were going, and three men appeared in the bombed out room they're in. What were they wearing? All in white. And one of them stepped forward and said, go through that door and you'll be safe. They didn't think about it. They went into the door, which was under some stairs, closed the door. 30 seconds later, the entire building beyond that door was hit by a missile. Do we really in the West hate Muslims so much that we will put up with this and celebrate this? And many, many are now saying, no. A new generation are able to, to look at the whole system of control and say, this system stinks. Do you have hope about what's going to happen in the future? Welcome again, Lauren. You were a journalist for a long time, and we know that you went to Gaza in 2008. What kind of impact did your visits to Palestine have on your becoming a Muslim? It was absolutely imperative to my journey to Islam that I came into contact with the people of Palestine. I honestly believe that Allah Ta'ala sent me to Palestine so that the people of Palestine could send me back to Allah Ta'ala. I had a service to do to the people to try to communicate what, what the truth was of the apartheid and not in return, but they gave me so much more. Even if I had not written anything, they gave. Even if I had bad intent, they still gave. Is there any moment you cannot forget from your visits to Gaza? On the free Gaza in 2008, we'd sailed from Cyprus to bring some aid, but mostly to try to draw the world's media attention to the blockade. And when we arrived, the sea was full of children swimming up excitedly, and everything that could float was floating, and people were saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And it wasn't a scary sound, it was a joyful sound. I didn't know that Allahu Akbar could be a joyful sound. And I remember the brothers in black, in black fatigues and black t-shirts, and you know, proper beards coming on and saying salam alaikum and smiling and me not being afraid of them. Never did I have a moment of fear from any level of society in Palestine and specifically in Gaza. The minimum I felt was respect, but normally it was like love. I can't describe it any other way. Can you tell us a little bit about the current situation in Gaza? What is coming out from Gaza now is very specific to the issues of the hostages, the 9,000 plus hostages held by Israel for a long period and a short period under appalling circumstances with no international interest and no international law coming to seek to free them. We are seeing photos at this particular time of men who look like they are from a concentration camp from a Second World War film. The new ways of torture, oof, the dogs attacking women and children. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great deal of new forms of evil being revealed, I would say. Yeah. You know, as, a, as a former Christian, one of the things that, that many people struggle with is Allah's might and power and that God gets angry. You're not automatically, just by being human or just saying words, allowed into his grace that he can say no for you is eternal damnation. And now all of those verses in the Holy Quran that we would have gone drinking pus, my God, these kinds of people are making people drink pus. They're deliberately trying to create Jahannam on earth, but they won't, but they will experience it themselves. So does it look to you that the issue of Palestine is leading to something good or bad in the world in terms of people's perception? I think by the grace of Allah that the Gaza Holocaust is a wake up call to humanity and not just people amazingly and wonderfully opening the Qur'an for themselves, but actually through the awakening, also looking at the entire system of control, but also that a new generation are able to, or being encouraged to look at the whole system of control and say, this system stinks. How can we still be arming the fourth most heavily armed military in the world against homeless families on the streets of Han Yunus. What is this? What is the win? What is the win? 
We are being asked what to ask. What is the win? Do we really, do in the West, hate Muslims so much? Can we have it inside us that we will put up with this and celebrate this? That's the amazing thing. And I'm very, I feel positive about this, alhamdulillah. And I feel positive because our people in Gaza are positive. They're in pain and they're in agony, but they know that Allah has an incredible result from this. Looking at the current situation, do you have hope about what's going to happen in the future, about Palestine and what it's leading to in the world? Yesterday, I was speaking to a brother called Mohammed Ajour. Mohammed is a, a double uh, amputee whose legs were taken in a missile strike from the entity nearly 10 years ago now. SubhanAllah, I said, how are you? He said, Alhamdulillah, it's enough to know that you're thinking about us. He said, but the people are crying and they're in pain, but we know Allah is with us. How, after nine months, can you have this resilience? Now we have thousands of living examples showing how strong of an impact their faith can have. What's your comments on this? Ghazat al-Izza, Gaza the Dignified. And I heard, I've heard Gaza referred to as well as Medinat al-Quran. Because I think one of the really important things we need to understand is that Gaza is a place where the people pray Fajr together, where they make dhikr after Fajr where they teach their children to read the Qur'an from a young age and to live it, not just to read it, to live it. We are looking at a city of Qur'an being deliberately shelled from outside, but it can, can that be destroyed? No. No more than the Qur'an can be destroyed by burning a book. Allah. So remember this as we scroll our timelines of death and destruction. Miracles are happening hourly, minute by minute all across Gaza. And I'll give you one told to me by Mansour Schumann. Look him up. People probably already know him. Alhamdulillah, he was in Gaza during the genocide for five months. And he told me this face to face. He is a trusted source. He was in a bombed out building near Al Nasa Hospital. Remember when that was the hospital being destroyed, subhanAllah. And he was with a friend and it was a very hectic situation. Drones were going, tanks were going. They were thinking, where do we go and hide? And three men appeared in the bombed out room they're in. What were they wearing? All in white, with white hair and white beards and no sign of travel on them. And uh, Mansour said it was such a hectic situation. He didn't even ask them, how come you're clean when, we're so, when everybody's dirty here? And one of them stepped forward and said, you're not in the right place. Go through that door and you'll be safe. They didn't think about it. They went into the door, which was under some stairs, closed the door. 30 seconds later, the entire building beyond that door was hit by a missile. Allah. Many others that I could tell you that are being reported to me and spoken about amongst the people of Palestine. So remember this, the unseen realm is active in this. Allahu Akbar. That also Mansour told me that there was a young man who just started really practicing his deen during the genocide. He was maybe 21 years old. They had moved to the south of Gaza from the north. And he said, I have to go and get my family some food, but it's through a dangerous, treacherous area where the military were killing everybody. And uh, he said, but I'll be back at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. that day came and went. 6 p.m. the next day came and went. And so Mansour and his friends said, we have to go and find him. We we're going to have to risk it and go and find him. And they went on in the direction he would have traveled and lo and behold the young man is face down on the road having been murdered by the Zionist regime. Now he had had scars on his face. When they turned him over there was no scarring on his face. Mansour took a tissue out of his pocket and dabbed at the blood on his face. He said the smell of musk is still on that tissue to this day. He said and as we were thinking okay where are we going to uh, bury him? A white peacock in the middle of Gaza, a white peacock, completely perfectly white, came in front of them and spread its wings like this, spread its, um, its feathers and showed them the most beautiful feathers and then just walked on past. But then he said to his friend, did you see that? He said, yes, but remember you're dealing with a Shaheed, you're not thinking straight. So they bury him, give him his respects and only then can they talk about what was that? What was that symbolism? What are we being shown? Allah. Just know, just know watching this, this is not the Israelis game. It's, it's not. They're, they're not. they're not the upper hand here. Well, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. They're the lower hand. Thank you for coming. I hope to see you later, inshallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.